Our third presenter, Dr. Islam Rekik. Thank you very much. So I've always been fascinated by the human brain, which is a highly complex interconnected system. And as you can see here, the brain can be modeled or represented as a matrix. So your brain and literally the matrix is your neural fingerprint. So you can see here, this beautiful matrix encodes the relationship between different anatomical regions in the brain. And if we can understand, map, represent this matrix, we learn how to predict different brain states. For example, we can learn to predict if you're happy or not, you're sad, happy, maybe inspired, maybe this is a neural fingerprint of your decision making. We can also eavesdrop on your love life. So possible with the brain networks. So here in this example, you can see a morphological brain of a baby that is a, new, a newborn baby. So one thing that is important about this brain matrix is that if we are able to track its dynamics over time, we will, be, uh, we will get a better understanding of how brain connectivities evolve over time. And it will also, I would say this is a lifelong journey from the cradle to the grave, so it, it's not ending. So starting with the baby brain, you can see how this baby brain evolves and changes over only three months. Like connectivity, the strength of the connectivity is dramatically evolved. And this is a 75-year-old brain of a healthy, of a healthy human being, so it's still young, always. Uh, so, <laughs> so however, we can also diagnose the brain matrix. So if this matrix is diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment, you guys can see the changes in the brain, like the whole structure is changing, right? So one thing that has always fascinated me is that how do these changes occur? And how can we use AI to understand our mere intelligence, our aging, our neural development, when, uh, from the beginning, I would say, of our lives. So every brain, to get those matrices, I forgot to tell you that we need an image. So basically every brain needs a network, needs an image. And here, as you can see in this world map, it's not good news for everyone. So it might be bad news for many countries in the world. So you see that um, according to this review paper published in the Lancet Oncology in 2021, the world is split into two parts, the north and the south. Old stories never age. So same thing. So basically, uh, the mainstream solution when it, when it comes to this big gap that we need to be mindful of is to increase access to imaging facilities, uh, also workforce capacity, and also digital technology, which is really time consuming. It's costly. Uh, it will take time to implement. So ideally, we'll try to find affordable, faster solutions to such a problem. So here, basically, this is a question I'm throwing at you. Can we diagnose early and better with limited resources and at lower costs? Is this possible? Okay, so it's a big question. I'm not giving you the whole answer, but maybe one first step. So here, given a data, X starting with X, so given an input data that is affordable to acquire, that is accessible, and it might have a low to middle quality, we want to design this neuro AI model that is able to predict an X hat. And this X hat is basically costly to acquire. It is in inaccessible in many countries, even in many clinical facilities in our countries here, for example, and it's, it is of high quality. How can we do that? So generative AI, so <laughs> it's everywhere, I guess. So basically, this is what we're trying to design. We're designing this AI model. It could be any kind of fancy neural network that is able to uh, solve this. So going from data to no data. So we have uh, published several works along these directions and, and over the past three years. So starting from a relatively affordable brain graph, which is encoded into a matrix, we aim to predict its evolution across multiple costly domains, like for example, predicting functional connectivity that requires the acquisition of a resting state, functional MRI, right? And uh, predicting uh, the, 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 the graph or the matrix directly so while circumventing the need to acquire the real data. We do that also at different scales or resolutions and across time. So 
let me just give you an overview of this. So basically, given a source brain graph, so this is a, a source brain graph that is supposedly to, that is supposed to be affordable, we aim to predict a costly brain graph in the target domain, for example, functional connectivity from morphological. Also, we solve the problem of the multigraph prediction. So in the multigraph prediction, we predict multiple graph representations of your brain network across costly domains from an affordable representation. And we do that also across different scales. So starting with a low resolution graph, while circumventing the need to acquire costly data, we directly super resolve the brain at higher scales. And also, we don't forget about time, so we are able to predict the full evolution trajectory of the brain connections over time from a single acquisition, and you can see here. So, and lastly, we have also pioneered what we call the connectional brain template. So we learn using a deep neural network model how to integrate a population of brain matrices into a single one, and that represents the fingerprint of a particular population at a particular stage, like age, sex, uh, maybe happiness or depression. So uh, yeah, so using all of these predicted data, along with, uh, with the original one, so the generated one, we are able to boost the performance of classifiers, biomarker identification, of also you know, distinguishing between disordered brains and, um, uh, and typical brains. So there is a whole lot to do when uh, using predictive intelligence in medicine. So just to sum up, if you're interested, this is a, a, re a review paper that summarizes all these works, neuro graph neural networks and network neuroscience. And um, it has been published in 2022. The codes uh, are available. There is also a lot of videos on all these works published uh, on the Basira Lab YouTube channel, which is my research lab. We have more than uh, 54, uh, 54 available source codes. So we promote open science, open AI, and we also promote reproducibility. So if you're interested in learning more about these research directions, there are um, more than 30 oral presentations too. So just uh, before I wrap up, I want to show you this amazing uh, video. So here we were able to predict the evolution of the brain cortical surface of a newborn over the first, first year of postnatal development. And you can see the velocity here of, of the growth. And we can use AI to predict typical and atypical development of you know babies at risk of uh, schizophrenia and other types of diseases and we can translate these methodologies to the image space where we can predict the evolution of your uh, uh, your the picture of your brain over time so yeah so predictive neuro ai there's a whole lot to do it's so the first step one brain at a time one step at a time so i hope that um, here the ai will help us clean up our mess, but also create so many awesome things. Thank you.